Hello, my name is Tita Ovia, and I am the co-founder and head of public sector growth at Helium Health. We are a fast-growing health tech company out of Nigeria that is using technology to bridge the healthcare gap across Africa and emerging markets. African healthcare is in a delicate situation. Throughout the continent, there are more locally born physicians residing outside their countries than in them. It costs us between $20,000 and $60,000 over a seven year period to train a medical doctor. Over the last decade, the brain drain has cost us an additional $2 billion. Never mind medical tourism that costs a country like Nigeria a billion dollars a year. All this means is that you and I have to suffer through poor healthcare services. How can we fix this? What can we do about it? To answer these questions, we need to take a detour through history. The only reason you and I exist today is because throughout history, we have used technology to improve how we take care of our body. Our life expectancy has gone from 30 years in the 1900s to 70 years today. Think about it. In 1796, Edward Jenner created the first vaccine for the smallpox virus. Today, the world is relying on COVID-19 vaccines, a product of 225 years of technological evolution to regain some sort of normalcy. In 1895, the X-ray machine was invented. In 1957, the first wearable pacemaker was developed. And a year later, we found a way to implant the pacemaker in the human body. I have no doubt we would not be here today without all these technological advancements in healthcare. Let me use a more recent example to contrast just how far health technology has brought us. In 1918, the influenza pandemic brought havoc over the world in a similar way COVID-19 has. There was no telemedicine, so seeing a doctor put you at such high risk of contracting the virus. There was no Zoom or Google Meet, so definitely no working from home. About 500 million people, or a third of the world's population then, became infected with the virus between 1918 and 1919. The number of deaths was estimated to be at least 50 million people worldwide. With the help of technology, we have so far been able to prevent a repeat of the terrible, terrible disaster of 1918. Think about all of the COVID-19 trackers developed by Apple and Google that the North American governments have relied on to let their citizens know um, if they had come into contact with anybody who had tested positive for COVID. In Singapore, the government developed a system called Trace Together that did the same thing. In Ghana, the government used data-driven technology and commissioned a tracker app that relied on metadata behind people's phones. In Nigeria, Helium Health helped the government develop one of the most aggressive travel testing portals in the world to limit the importation of COVID-19. Even with all these rapid technological advancements, I am convinced that we could have done a lot better and used even more technology. In the beginning, I said that African healthcare was in a delicate situation. To bring us out of this precarious place, we must do what those before us did and what we have continued to do. We must innovate around healthcare technology. We are the second most populous continent on earth, but we only contribute to 1% of the global healthcare spend. That makes us a Petri dish for healthcare outbreaks. While most countries were battling COVID, Nigeria was also dealing with Lassa fever and cholera outbreaks. Guinea has also been dealing with the Ebola outbreak alongside COVID. Data-driven technology is incredibly important to planning and fighting against disease outbreaks. Last year, we had hospitals on the brink of shuttering because patients had stopped coming because of their fear of COVID-19 we had to rearrange our product roadmap and release our telemedicine solution five months earlier so doctors could treat patients from the comfort of their homes. We need more technology to collect and make better sense of data. At Helium Health, we built an EMR just for this purpose. In a region where medical data is primarily collected via paper and pen, we are fighting to change that because these manual processes lead to hundreds and thousands of medical errors that can kill patients. 
Even at a government level, if a state's healthcare official realizes that birth rates are rapidly increasing, he or she can take that data and make a case for investing in more schools and training even more teachers because they know that in a few years, these services are definitely going to be needed. Our healthcare facilities are underfunded because financial institutions cannot make decisions with the little to no data our healthcare facilities have to offer. This is the time for us to use technology to drive solutions that allow healthcare providers get access to financing. The capital will allow them to expand, purchase better equipment, increase their inventory, and provide more affordable healthcare for you and I.